to celebrate the general availability of Windows 11, I have the team that designed and built Windows 11 joining us today. And I'm really excited to introduce you to our two guests. We have Christina Cohen. She works as a principal creative director at Microsoft on Windows 11. And I also have Sheethal Agarwal. She works as a principal design research manager. Christina and Sheethal, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having us, we're excited. So before we jump in, I was wondering, could you tell my audience, what does a creative director even do? What is a design research manager? What, what do those roles entail? Uh, being a principal design research manager uh, for Windows means I get to lead a group of um, fantastic researchers whose job it is to understand the behaviors, attitudes, and practices of the people we're designing with and for. What creative direction of the product is about, what my team does, is more about looking across the entire product, understanding the look and the feel that we want to come from the product, the emotions that we want our customers to feel when they're using the product. Uh, one question is a lot of people now, you know, now that Windows 11 is available, you could start upgrading your PC. If you buy a new PC, it'll come with Windows 11. What can people expect when they launch Windows 11 for the first time? First and foremost, you'll see something that's not completely different. You'll see something that's familiar, that's not something that's going to surprise you, right? It's going to feel like the Windows that you've always used, that you know and love, um, but it's going to have just that refreshed look and feel. It's going to, you're going to see just little details like the motion and the icons, the way, um, you know, the new centered start menu feels compared to the start menu previously, which was left aligned. Um, things are going to feel softer. Um, we've gone through and we've rounded corners. Things aren't as sharp as they used to be. Um, and all of those little details add up. Um, and you're going to see our new Bloom wallpaper as well. That's going to be one of the first things you see. It's a centered motif um, <laughs> behind the start menu that uh, it's, it's beautiful, it's iconic, and we think that it represents um, everything that Windows 11 is about. Oh, makes sense. And, and with all these changes, all these new features, all these details, uh, what would you say are the two to three most compelling new features in Windows 11? And I, I know it's so much coming out, there's so much greatness, uh, but if you just had to pick two to three, what would those be? My favorite feature is the refreshed look and feel, and you're just gonna, you know, um, you're gonna see a Windows that is more cohesive. With Windows 11, we've made a huge effort to actually go in, find those surfaces that might still look like Windows 7, might still look like Windows XP, and we've gone through, um, and we've made a cohesive, fluent design language for the entire system. That actually helps the system, that actually helps the operating system be a lot easier to use. No, I, I remember always, especially on Windows 10, you go back into, say, the control panel and, you, you know, within a few clicks, you end up in some like, you know, Windows 95 looking interface. So uh, yeah, that, that's a big one right there. And I'd say my second favorite feature is probably the widgets. Um, I'm really excited about the widgets. Um, at a glance, um, you can just pull over a panel. You can see more information from the widgets that matter most to you. You can look at news. You can take a break from your day and check out what's going on in the world. Um, I love the widgets like to do and calendar because I personally am just, you know, every day I'm like, okay, hey, what am I, what am I doing today? <laughs> you know, I want to see that at a glance, right? Without having to open a calendar app or open an app. And so you've mentioned kind of all these new things coming up, like, you know, you have the widgets, you have this new design. Um, and, and this might be something you've encountered before, but uh, say with your parents, uh, I'm not sure what version of Windows they're running, but are you going to make a pitch to them to upgrade to Windows 11? And if so, how are you going to sell it to them? Yeah, no, I love this because this is like literally thing, conversations that are happening with my family these days. So the UX and the UI has become so much more seamless. Like there's, it's fewer steps to get to where you want to be. Like take the settings experience, for example, we've, su we've super simplified that there's been a ton of research that's gone into this. And to be perfectly honest, settings is something that for 10 years, we have been trying to figure out how do we address this like consistent detractor, frankly, for the Windows experience. Um, it's that kind of stuff that I'm also talking to my parents about, right? Like, um, it, it, of course, like there's some burdensome feelings that can come along with any OS and just these smoother paths to getting to exactly where you wanna be uh, quickly in an intuitive way. Uh, she thought that that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'm, I'm going to use that same technique to convince my parents to upgrade because I, I think anytime I get on the phone with my, my mom and I try to troubleshoot issues on the computer, if you have fewer steps, that's, that's all the better. 
Uh, one thing is there, there's all this kind of design change. There's a whole new look and feel. The start menu's in the center now. What was the inspiration for the design and kind of what led you down this path? There are a lot of different signals that played into you know the new design language. Um, first and foremost, I think our listening to our customers, you know, Sheethal knows this <laughs> very well, being our user research lead, um, just constantly listening to customers, you know, what their needs are, what they're looking for in their in their um, operating system. Um, you know, and I think, you know, people use PCs differently today than they did six years ago when we came out with Windows 10, right? The centered start menu um, works really well across form factors. It works great for touch. Right? I think when we designed that left align start menu years and years ago, you know, there were not nearly as many form factors in the market. We were primarily mouse and keyboard. Um, so there were definitely signals like that. Um, and then you know, the design language evolved. So when we came out with Windows 10, the company was still using the Metro design language. And the Metro design language was inspired by minimalist design. It was super simple inspired by magazines, you know, kind of content over Chrome, um, which was great at the time. But what we learned over the last, you know, six years since we've launched that is that the design system was a little bit too stripped back. Um, you know, icons were all the same color, reversed out of life tiles. And so when you're scanning and searching for something, it's hard when everything looks exactly the same. And so um, part of Windows 11 was actually moving from the Metro design language to the Fluent design language that, you know, allowed us to have more color. It allowed us to have depth and light in this different kind of, or in this additional Z space that was more familiar with customers because it's more like what you would experience in the physical world, right? Um, a lot of my subscribers and a lot of my audience ask the question, you know, there are all these new features that show up in Windows 11. Um, but how does Microsoft identify which features to actually build? You know, you, you probably have this massive list of, you know, thousands and thousands of requests, but how do you narrow that down to, these are the things that we're going to include in the final release? Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a great question. And of course there's multiple factors that will come into that. Um, but one of the most, uh, you know, critical components is again, going back to customer signal, it's gonna be about, recognizing where is it that we can provide the most customer value at the end of the day. And so, um, for example, like if you take something like uh, Snap Groups, you know, we continue to make sure that we're investing energy there because we heard so much feedback around the beauty of having like a simple way to focus your your work, be able to move across different surfaces that you might be pulling from, whether it's the web and your Word document or your PowerPoint or whatever, um, being able to uh, hear directly from the customers helped us understand truly, like, you know, there's, there's a, a, a value and a proposition here that we weren't necessarily acting on yet. Windows 11 has been available to insiders uh, for some time now, and I, I think it's been a, a few months actually. And so a lot of feedback is already coming in. I think the press has you know, had a lot of feedback. There's a lot of feedback on social media. Uh, could you let me know what type of feedback have you been hearing so far from customers? We've been hearing a lot again about that feeling of like, there is a, a feeling like I'm in a new space. We've done things differently. That center line moment has popped for people. Um, there has also been uh, great feedback, you know, just about feeling that we've started to evolve the Windows experience, that we're not just sticking to, you know, what was and, and added a new number on top of it, but we are showing signs of that evolution that that um, we're hoping are, are uh, being enacted on, I guess. so. Um, I think that we've been hearing, you know, we've been hearing some really great feedback as well as already these opportunities for the team to be taking in and think about like, hey, how can we make this better? What is it that we need to do either to clear like learning and teaching gaps or is it, you know, just about taking it back into the labs and thinking about uh, the usability elements of it? And Sheethal, one follow on question to that. So as more and more people start upgrading to Windows 11 and they start using it, um, undoubtedly, people are going to have feedback where like, oh, you know, I wish this was there. or I wish that did, you know, that feature did this type of functionality. Uh, but how do people go about submitting feedback if uh, if they have thoughts like that, that they want the team to hear? 
Yeah. Okay. So again, we are listening in all the channels, right? So we are what when you're posting into the social media world, know that that we're paying attention there. Um, you can obviously you can get signed up for the Windows Insider program as well, which is a really great way to kind of get connected. The feedback hub is also a great way to um, send us notes. You know what you're thinking, give us feedback. Um, an easy way to get to the feedback hub in Windows 11 is to use the Windows key plus F. Um, and it's super easy to use. Just let us know how you're feeling. Awesome. And, and Christina and she thought, thanks for, thanks for letting us know kind of how to submit feedback and, and that you're listening to the feedback. Um, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of feedback coming in, uh, with you personally, are there, are there any design inconsistencies or are there any features that you wish made it in the product? Like do any of these keep you up at night? Um, any of them top of mind for you? Absolutely. There's, there's a lot that keeps me up at night from, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's still, you know, Windows 11 is a journey. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, Windows is a product, it's decades old. You've got surfaces in there that are from Windows 95, from Windows XP, right? And so going back and cleaning all that up and making one co cohesive design language for our customers is a lot of work. And we're still on a journey and we've done a lot with Windows 11. You'll see so much goodness in this first release of Windows 11, but we're going to continue on the journey. Of course, there is always more we want to be doing. We know that there's so much great opportunity, again, building a brand new OS, feels wide open, right? And so I think just the understanding, to me, I have like have those moments of like patience because I know what's coming. Like I see this roadmap of two and three and five years out and I know we're gonna keep, you know, building and we'll be iterating. There's gonna be so much iteration um, as we start to un unroll Windows 11 out into the, you know, general population over the next few months, like it's, it's coming so I'm mostly in this place of like, okay, let's get the feedback. So we know what it is that we want to go, um, you know, double down on going forward. One other question that my audience has, and, and this is, you know, people sit, they see this announcement about windows 11, but I, I think one kind of thought that's top of mind for a lot of people is how do you actually build an operating system like windows 11? Uh, you obviously have many steps. You have, you know, the envisioning, then you have the design, then you go down to the coding. Uh, but could you shed some light on what that whole kind of process even looks like to build an OS? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's important to keep in mind that the um, the process is not linear, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, Windows is a living, breathing product that's constantly changing. We're constantly listening to customers and we're constantly working across the company to, you know, change our plan and change our process, right? And so it's, it's more of an agile development process where it's not one thing after another. Um, just to give a little bit of insight into you know some of how we one thing that my team does is we will create a video for the upcoming release right where we're, we'll work across the different um product teams um, we'll understand the different product areas we'll go talk to you know one team that's working on widgets another might be working on teams integration and chat right and we'll understand those areas and we'll put together a video that actually sets the direction and helps the organization understand where we're going with windows and so having that video um it's a really great way for us to do envisioning work. And then from there, you know, we're constantly listening to Sheetal's team and the user research team and hearing the customer feedback and understanding. And so um, I think just keeping in mind that it's, you know, we're in a world now where Windows doesn't ship in a box like it did in the past, right? We used to have these like two year product cycles, right? Where, you know, we have this date that we're working towards. We've got two years, you know, <laughs> people are going to go buy this box off the shelf, right? And it's different now where, you know, we're constantly changing. We can constantly make updates. And so, um, so with Windows 11, um, obviously this massive investment for Microsoft, it's gonna change computing for so many people. How do you look at that and then evaluate, was it successful? Yeah, I mean, I think that they're, fundamentally this is gonna be about, are the people who are using Windows 11 able to accomplish the things they came here to do? They use our system to get their work done, to coordinate their family activities, to, um, you know, be productive or or com complete the tasks that they've, they've identified, right? We call those jobs to be done. Um, ultimately, it's gonna be about, did we create that experience in a way that, again, goes back right up into those design principles? Was it done in a way that felt seamless to them and they felt that they were able to focus the right attention, um, that they didn't have to spend a bunch of time learning new things because there was still that element of they knew where to go, the familiarity moments in there.
Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, just one last question today. And one thing I did is I asked my audience, hey, what questions do you have for the team? And, and one that seemed to pop up again and again, and, and something you also just read about in the press a lot, uh, Microsoft famously, I guess a few years ago, said, oh, Windows 10 is going to be the last version of Windows, and there'll just be updates over time. Um, and here now we have Windows 11. Uh, could you talk briefly about what, what was some of the rationale or justification for coming out with a, a completely new kind of number or version number for Windows? Yeah. So, you know, I think when that comment was made, it was a, a comment around just the nature of technology today where, you know, an operating system does not ship in a box anymore, right? Like it is a living, breathing thing that we are constantly iterating on, constantly updating, right? Um, and so I think that's where the comment originally came from, which is still true. Um, but with Windows 11, I think we just, we made so many big leaps in the, in the, in the product, right? It wasn't these tiny incremental changes. It was actually a fundamental shift in, you know, how we were designing windows. And so, um, we felt that that needed a new number, a new brand, right? The logo changed even, right, for, for Windows 11. And so, um, so yeah, it was, it was this moment where we were like, computing has changed so much in the last six years. We need to make a bigger jump here. We need to signal to our customers that this is a new and different and modern operating system, right? And so by doing that, it just helps to reinforce just the big changes that we made in Windows 11. All right. Well, uh, Sheethal and Christina, thank you so much for joining today and sharing your thoughts on Windows 11. I know I'm excited about uh, starting to play around with Windows 11. My audience is very excited. Uh, and, and we're all looking forward to, I, I guess, getting the upgrade or buying the new machine that has Windows 11 on it. Um, so thanks again for uh, taking the time to join today. Thank you so much. This was super fun. And we're excited to hear from you and others listening. Absolutely. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.